Sila. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm, I'm Helen Thompson. I'm with the Grand Canyon Association. I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, before I get started, last time Lori spoke for our lecture series was in Prescott. She said only 12 people showed up. So, so this is great. <laughs> so this is really great. Um, I wanted to um, mention about this lecture series. This is a real special lecture series to my heart and then of course to my official partner in part. Um, this is a truly a collaborative uh, series. We uh, have worked for three years to try to get this one going and this is the second of four um, lectures in this series and we'll have uh, lectures starting again in 2010. So this is one that, as you know, is just park staff talking about the issues of uh, the science and resource management <coughs> division. So uh, it's really kind of special. And they're bringing the issues and their research to you rather than you going up there to find out. So or reading in the paper. So it's kind of a, a very special thing. So thanks to all of their staff for working long hours and uh, putting their presentations together. It's appreciated. And I also have to recognize Klein Library. Richard formerly just came in, so he's, he's the one that's helping us uh, get this lecture series off the ground and was there at that first meeting when we begged, um, asked to have the lecture series here. So thanks, Richard. Um, and before I introduce the person who's going to introduce Lori, I want to mention, um, some of you will be very interested in this, our regular lecture series, we usually have it later in the month, but because of the spring break, we had to bump it up. And next Wednesday, we have another lecture, and I think you'll find it interesting, Revealing the Secrets of Grand Canyon's Historic Colorado River Boats. And that's talking about the conservation efforts there at the park, and Jan Olson and Brent Bender are going to be here. So I invite you to pick up a flyer and spread the word on that one as well. So with that, I'm going to get away from the microphone and go back to the camera, and um, invite oh, I want to tell you, um, our lectures we're working on it with Lisa Leach for the how many were here at Lisa's lecture last? It's on YouTube. We uh, we record all of our lectures and make them available. And um, Jack Pennington um, got a we have a GCA area in YouTube, and we're going to start putting those lectures. We'll still have them here at Klein. I'll still have the DVD, but you'll be able to see them if you missed it or pass the word. So the information is going out there to the world, and at least this has been viewed quite a few times already. We had a whole room that just found out this morning. We can have a competition. <laughs> That's between you. That's between you. So, sorry about that. I was supposed to announce that. I just found that out this morning. It's exciting. But with that, I'm going to introduce Steve Metz, and he's the Natural Resource Group Leader, and also Lori's boss. So, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I, I want to start by saying that no one really wants boss. So, Lori, it's a unique character, and uh, it, it is my great pleasure to uh, introduce Lori Carrick, who is uh, an accomplished author, um, vegetation ecologist, and, and just an overall great spirit. And, and it's an honor to be able to uh, work with her. She's a motivation to uh, all the folks that she works with. So, I'm really glad you all came in. You really enjoyed a great show uh, by Lori, and hopefully, learn a great deal of stuff. So, Without any further ado, Lori McCarrick. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, I am not going to use that microphone because I tend to walk around. So I've got this, and if it's too loud, you can let it know. Um, thank you very much for coming. And I am anxious to know how many of you may have actually worked with our program before. So if you've worked with it, stand up. the audience participation part. <laughs> All right, so I'm hopeful, here's some more who have worked with the program. I'm actually hopeful that by the end of the talk, maybe some more of you are going to want to work with our program. So that's my overall goal. Um, I did read what I had written several months ago that I was going to talk about, and I'm hopeful that I'll be able to cover it all. Um, I have no idea actually how long this talk is going to take, so if I get pushing the 50 minutes, someone might want to just wave me down. Um, I tend to go on and on. Um, I usually like to start by just asking what folks think about when I say Grand Canyon. And just throw things out. The first thing that comes to your mind. 
the red rocks. Red rocks, big corn? <laughs> okay, what else? Strenuous. Okay. Colorado River. Yep. Anything else? The oldest rocks on the continent. <laughs> All right, good. I have given a lot of talks, and I have never yet had somebody mention a plant as the thing that comes to mind when they think about Grand Canyon. It is typically something like, I saw a condor flying over the canyon, or something about a river trip. Um, the fellow on the upper, upper right probably had a very memorable experience hiking out of the canyon. I'm sure many of you have felt like that. Um, you may have seen an interesting wildlife interaction. Uh, that's actually um, a snake with a lizard in its grasp. and. Um, it is getting dinner on the way. A lot of people think about the historic structures. And my goal is to teach you about the vegetation and also get you excited about it so that maybe a year or two from now, when I ask you what the first thing that comes to mind, maybe there's one person in the audience that says something about vegetation. Mormon's tea. Yay, yeah, you win! Excellent. All right, so um, as promised, what I wrote up was that I wanted to cover all of the different components of our program. They're listed on the slide, I'm not sure how many I'm actually going to talk about, but I think I'm going to hit the vast majority of them. So as an introduction, I am the only permanent staff member that works with the Parks Vegetation Program, and I have been there since 1993. The program spans a broad breadth, everything from doing survey work before there's any type of project, um, what's an example of a project you guys know about that's been happening at Grand Canyon? Tammy risk eradication. I'm sorry? Tammy pulling. Yep, that's obviously one of ours, yes, and I'm going to talk about that. What's another project that you know about? Desert View Revenge. You know about Desert View Revenge, excellent. Alternative Spring Bridge. Oh, good, all right. Good. What about another project on the South Rim, maybe in the village area? Permit Road. Permit Road. So all of those projects, and just about any project that happens at Grand Canyon, we've got some piece of. Whether it's an archaeological survey, um, we do work associated with that and go out to sites beforehand and just verify and even help them with some of the restoration techniques or just identify whether there are any issues with vegetation that we need to think about before they do their work. So we have a broad depth. Um, one of the most important things to me is outreach and education, and that's why I think this is a great opportunity. And again, I am going to ask you at the end how many people want to come and work with us, so keep that in mind as I'm going through this. You might want to think about your favorite component. <clears throat> so Grand Canyon has the highest diversity of any national park unit, and when I first learned that, I was pretty surprised, actually. I thought that some place like Yosemite or maybe even one of the Hawaiian parks, because of the elevational gradient that they have also, would maybe have a greater species diversity. But Grand Canyon actually holds that title at this point in time. And I'll talk to you about increases in species. But in comparison, Yosemite, which is the one that I kind of figured would have it, has about 1,494. And species are coming and going. So that's probably the next highest park as far as I can find. If you were to look across the state of Arizona and all of the plant species,